and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at transferring files from one computer to another through the network on a Linux system, although this could be done on pretty much any operating system. Uh, and we're going to be using SSH for, there's many of different options on how you can do this, whether you're copying one file, multiple files. We're going to be looking at doing it from the shell, obviously. We're also going to be looking at doing it in a GUI interface. Uh, and we're also going to be looking at synchronizing stuff so you're not copying files that already exist, you know, to save yourself time and bandwidth. And again, we're going to be using some different tools, but they're all using the SSH service. So if you have SSH running on a server, you're doing it through that. Anytime you do networking stuff through SSH, that's great. And you can do anything through SSH. You can run GUI applications, shell applications, you can stream audio, you can share files as we're going to look at today. Uh, anything can be piped through that. You can pipe all your web browser traffic through SSH. So let's go ahead and get started. And again, I'm just going to do a quick touch on a few different things. So right now I'm actually logged into this little folder here that says test. I'm on my son's computer, which is in the next room over. So I'm logged in through SSH here. I'm in a directory here called test and there's a file called hello. So we're going to go, we're going to copy a file there. We're going to copy that file back. So I'm going to switch over to my computer here. So I'm in a folder called tutorials on my computer. And here I'm listing out, I got a whole bunch of JPEGs, which we'll transfer later. Right now we're going to be looking at this alien.txt. If I cut that out, it's actually an ASCII image of my son many years ago. Uh, so it's just a text file, but it's displayed as an image. So I want to copy that to my son's computer. So I'm going to SCP. SCP is great for copying one or many files when you know what you want to copy and just push it or pull it, you know. So we're going to SCP and it's just like if you're using copy, except for it's over a network. So I'm going to say that alien.txt we're going to copy that over to Connor at and do it just like as if you were logging in to um, an SSH server. And then we're going to say colon. Now we can give a full path. We can be like home Connor. But if you don't do that, anything after this colon, if you don't use a forward slash, it knows you're looking for the home directory. And as we already checked, it's a test folder in his home directory. So right here, this is all I have to do. I can say s copy this full file to Connor's home directory in uh, folder test. And we hit enter. I type in my passphrase here. And if we switch back over to his computer, you can see that that file is there. And I can now cat it out. So that's on his computer. If we want to go the other way around, let's go back to my computer. We can do this. I can say copy, so s copy, user Connor. This is his IP address, that folder and hello.txt, where do we want to copy it to? I was going to say dot, which means the current directory I'm in, but I can give any path on my computer. I'm going to do that again, type in my password, and it says hello. Also, I want to notice, last time I did a video on something like this, someone was telling me that, oh, I use uh, security keys for SSH, so I don't have to type in a password. I am using a security key. You should use security keys, but I do not recommend leaving a blank password to security keys. Everyone has their own opinion on that, but if you don't put a password and someone gets on your computer and steals your security key, now they have access to all your machines. Where if you have a password, you know, they'd have to try to brute force it, which is not going to happen. Uh, so there we go. We copied that over. I can now cat it out on my local machine. That's great. And that's great if you know what you want to copy and where you want to copy to. But what about, uh, you know, navigating and then copying and pulling files? Well, you can use... SFTP, which is just like FTP, only encrypted. And again, that's not a new service. It's still using SSH. So again, I can go Connor at, and for me, like to get to my son's computer, my wife's computer, my daughter's computer, or my servers, or even my phone, I have shortcuts for all of this stuff, aliases or even scripts. So you don't have to type out all this every time uh, if you create aliases or scripts or functions for your shell. That's the whole point of using the shell. You don't have to type a lot if it's something you do regularly. I'm going to type in my password here, and now I'm logged into this computer. I'm in his home directory. I can list out the files in his home directory. I can go into that test uh, folder. I can list out the files, and if I want to get one of those files, I can pull hello.txt. Um, sorry, I'm thinking ADB. It's get hello.txt. And I just pulled it down. Be careful because it will override, like I just overwritten the hello.txt in my current directory. So be aware of that. It's not going to warn you if you're overwriting something. If I want to put a file, I can put my alien.txt and you can tab autocomplete. So you can transfer files back and forth that way. Thing is, a lot of people don't realize is that you can actually use SFTP 
in most uh, GUI file managers, at least on Linux, I can't think of any file manager that doesn't support this. So what we do, I like using uh, PC uh, man file manager. So I'll just open that up and I'm in my current directory that we're working in. And just up here in the URL, and again, you can do this with uh, Thunar, uh, Nautilus, Dolphin, if those still exist. I've been using PC uh, Man FM for a while. But whatever you, file manager you're using on Linux, it, this will probably work. Uh, SFTP, um, colon forward slash forward slash, the username, if it's a different user than you, 192.168.1.153 is his address. It's going to ask you for a password, and you can tell it to remember to log out, uh, remember forever. I'm just going to say forget it immediately. So once I close this window, theoretically, it should um, go away. And there we are. Uh, it brings me right to his computer. We're looking at the root directory. Uh, so anything Connor has permission to view, I can view through here because I'm logged in as Connor. I can go to his home directory. I can go to test. I can see those files. And at this point, uh, let me go ahead and make this full screen. I can split the screen and I can go to a folder on my home. Uh, so delete this. So on the left is Connor's folder on his computer and on the right is mine. And I can copy and I can paste. I can grab some of these images. I can copy and paste them. Takes a moment because they're a little bit bigger. And there you go. So you have this GUI interface. And again, you can save that password. And then it shows up. You can see it right here. And I can unmount it if I want. So now it's unmounted. That's great. You know, SFTP, that's fine. And it shows up in your GUI there. But another way that might be a better way is to actually mount the directory through SSH. Uh, and you can, I'm going to show you how to do that manually, but you can actually put it in your FSTAB file so that it automatically mounts. Uh, I don't know really, I've never really done that. Uh, I'm also going to throw out here my personal opinion uh, is uh, mounting remote directories, I think is just a bad idea in general. I'm not saying that there aren't case uses where it's a good idea, but just remember you mount a remote directory if you accidentally delete something or you get some ransomware. Uh, now it can infect that directory and infect everything on that server. So I think it's a bad idea. I see lots of companies doing it when they don't need to using Windows file shares, but this would be the same thing. Mounting remote directories is not a good idea. Uh, you're better off synchronizing stuff using sync thing, rsync, which we'll talk about, next cloud. Uh, and that way things don't, you know, if you get something on your machine, it has limited access to the stuff on the remote machine rather than just being able to navigate through everything. Just a little uh, PSA there. Uh, so let's talk about mo mounting a remote directory. You will do it through SSH, but you will need to install a tool, sudo apt install SSH F F T FS. So SSH file system. I already have it installed. And again, use it just like all the other commands. Uh, so I need to make a directory where I'm going to mount. So I'm going to make a directory called Connor. So you can see there it is right there. And if I list out right now, there's nothing in there. And now I can SSH fs connor at 192.168.1.153. Again, if I just do this, it's going to mount his home directory, but let's go ahead and mount his test directory like so. And oh, I got to tell it where to mount my connor directory that I just created. Again, type in my passphrase here. And now, again, if I list, you can see the directory there, and I can list out what's in that directory. Again, spelling things right, only two ends. You can see the files in there, and I can CD into it, and you can see there. And if I open up my um, file manager again, uh, PC man file manager, you can see I'm in that directory right now. It's showing up here as a mounted directory. I still have it mounted as uh, SFTP up here, so it's listed in two different places. But it shows up just as a regular folder, and you and you treat it like a regular folder. But again. If you accidentally delete these files, you're deleting them right off the server, or if you accidentally change them, that's why you're better off really doing a sync, in my opinion. And, and again, there's uses, cases where you don't want to do that and really should always be backing up your servers. I'm just giving you a little warning there. I hear about people getting uh, ransomware on their machines and infecting their servers, and that should not happen. And I think the reason it happens is because people mount remote directories and then everything is just all shared, and there's no need for that. Anyway, that's just a little, little, uh, pet peeve of mine, but I'm showing you how to do it in case you want to do it. Lastly, but not leastly, so let's see if I should be able to unmount that, unmount that. It's saying my terminal's using it, so let's go ahead and move out of that directory, and there we go, unmount anyway. Now if I move back into Connor, 
it's showing nothing there because it's not mounted anymore. Let's go ahead and use rsync real quick. rsync has a lot of great features. We're going to go over the very basic usage of rsync here. I'm going to say rsync and let's say I wanted to copy all these images to Connor's test directory. I would just say, again, it's almost the same as all the other commands. I'm going to say rsync, rsync, and I'm going to say everything in this directory. I can even say like all JPEGs, but I'm going to say everything in this directory. I want to move over to Connor at tell it where I want it, like this. And I'm also, just for this, I'm going to say dash V so we can see the names of the files, what's going on, so verbose mode. So uh, why use this over scpy, scp? Well, here, look, so I'm, I'm starting to copy. Oh, and I didn't tell it to do it recursively, but it's copying all the files that are in this directory. So you can see it's taking a little bit with the images. If I control C to stop that and I run it again, Look, see how fast it went? It sees those files. It's checking those files to see if they've changed. But if they haven't changed, it's not going to recopy them. So again, it's going, it's going, it's going. If I stop it halfway and run it again, boom, you see how fast it goes? It's checking those files, no changes on them, so it's not moving anything over. Where if you used SCP, it's going to override those files. It's going to move them no matter what, uh, which is just a waste in many ways. Um, so yeah, and again, it told me that it was skipping that directory. I'm pretty sure just off the top of my head that R would be recursive. Let's see. I gotta type my passphrase right. There we go. I didn't, let's go back up. Yeah, so it sent an incremental file list. So again, I can stop that. If I move back over to Connor's directory folder here, you can see that file has been copied. A lot of the image has been copied. So copy the folder. So dash R is recursive. So if you want to copy the folder and all the subfolders, that will work too. And again, this is great, especially if you're copying a lot of files or larger files, you're not going to waste your time. Um, if you stop it halfway, it will continue where you left off because it's going to check for those changes. But even if you copy everything and then you make changes, it's only going to make copy over the changes that you've made, not everything. So those are a couple of ways to share files on Linux over a network using just SSH, which again, you can, there's other options out there. The thing is you probably already have SSH running if you're doing any type of remote stuff. The more um, services you have running with ports open, it's just more vulnerability. SSH is known, it's secure, it's updated. Anytime there's, there's been a security issue in the past, it gets fixed right away because it's so widely used. So highly recommend it. And I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. And I hope that you have a great day.